So I used to always wonder about that. How in the branches of Iman can you ever call one branch the lowest branch? Because the fact that it is mentioned, it means it's a great thing. But using the word lowest, it's like it makes you feel that. And the thawab of this year will be like very small. But if the wab, thawab is going to be very small, and this is not the place to mention it. So what was explained is that the word adna wasn't referring to iman itself. But it was referring to a tree. In a tree you got branches. Now the higher branch and the lower branch, the difference between the two of them is it's easier to reach the lower branch. It is more harder to reach the higher branch. It isn't that the lower branch is a weaker branch. But that the fruits of the lower branch will be of an inferior quality. Rather, it's easy for the child to pluck the branch which is low. And the branch which is high, someone looks at it and he says, that's not for me. And sometimes a child wants to climb to the top branch. Then if he finds a tree which got a low branch, then he'll grab onto that and pull himself up. But if there's no branch that is low, everything is high. So, Adna doesn't refer to low here, but it refers to a low branch. So, what does a low branch mean? A low branch means what they explain, Aisalu Wusulan. That it is very easy to reach. It's got nothing to do about being low, that it is insignificant. But what it got to do with? Very easy to attain this branch. Now, why is it so easy to attain that low branch? Because Imatatul Adha Anit Tariq removing dirt from the road, it is something that doesn't require much. It doesn't require great istiadad and ability. It doesn't require a lot of mind and understanding. It doesn't require a lot of time also. And then the hadith will give different examples where Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I saw that man in Jannah and how he was enjoying his walk in Jannah on account of a tree that he had went past and then he said, I will move this on tariqil muslimin from the roads of the Muslim because it is causing inconvenience. This man perhaps was a farmer. And a farmer normally is not regarded as the greatest intellectual in the world. Nobody even notices him. He's a farmer. Perhaps he was a businessman, a builder. So he's not an alim. But he saw something that was in the way of the people. Wealth he had, although he never had knowledge. So he said, for me to spend 2,000, 3,000 and get someone to remove it, what's going to harm me? So he removed something which nobody would have thought will be a very great thing. But because that low branch was also a branch of the tree. So we thought low means that hardly any sawab in it. But it meant that this is also one branch of that huge tree. And as the top branch got unique fruits and the fruit is called Jannah, then you might find that same fruit which is on the top branch, on the lower branch. And if you couldn't get the top fruit, then you got the bottom fruit. And the apple on the top and the apple at the bottom, sometimes it tastes the same. So how easy it was for him. So what the hadith was going to now be explaining was, that Allah Tawarukala, according to your isti'adad and ability, He has opened many roads for you to benefit in the world. And many a time, when we find that there is difficulty in doing something. So what it means is, I want to practice on this, but the branch is high. So to reach the high branch, the hadith has given us an ilaj. That look for the low branch. That there will be many other things which you can easily do. And that will pull you up to the higher branch. Why it will pull you up and why was imatatul adha anit tariq mentioned? Removing dirt from the road. It is because many a time what comes in the opposite of the ahadith where Allah's Nabi said avoid those things that curse you. So what was explained in that hadith is many a time me and you might go to a park example. In the past it was a man came to running water. In the Arab lands running water is like gold because the man in a desert he got no water. And he's thirsty and he's thirsty and then he comes to a place and he sees far and he doesn't know if it's a mirage or not. He has already been tricked three, four times. He must, doesn't know, must go in that direction, not go in that direction. Finally he makes the walk and he comes and he finds, hey, it's really water. And his heart and his life, everything is in the water. 
And just going for the water, it was like gold for him. And then he noticed that someone urinated in the water. Or someone had made stool in the water. Now he doesn't know who you are. But at that moment, his whole, all his hopes and everything falls. So when he looks at that day, a natural curse comes out of him. He doesn't even know who he is cursing and perhaps sometimes he cursed his own father. Because it was his father who did it. So the hadith said, watch out for that la'in. Because that like how dua ul ghaib lil ghaib is readily accepted. Similarly, the la'na of a ghaib on a ghaib is readily because there is no gharz behind it. It's not that I don't like you, that's why I'm cursing you. I don't even know you, but you did such a thing to me that broke me today. So that curse that comes now can sometimes destroy that man's entire life. But he doesn't know why. But that curse will go up like a missile. It will search for who was the one who did that and it will find you. So the hadith said, watch out, they don't get cursed. Because you won't even think it will harm you. I urinated under a tree. And I went away. And the next party that came was husband and wife with the picnic basket. And they were so happy and they sat. And while eating also, they even said, hey, something got a funny smell. When they stood up and the husband, he noticed, hey, he's wet in the behind. And he had to go for salah. He couldn't go for salah. How he's going to change? Everywhere he's walking, he's sitting in his car. On the car, that seat became dirty. But when he finds out at that time in anger, he doesn't know what to say and who to shout. So just that broken heart without a tongue also gives out its curse. She said, watch out. Don't get cursed for no reason. Meaning, don't throw the dirt in a place where it causes harm and you get knocked. So just like how that curse from a heart with no tongue could affect the man who the heart never knew did it. Now the opposite comes. That you are the cause of the removal of that difficulty. Imatatul Adha and Tariq. After you removed it, you never thought anything of it. But Allah Tabarukallah makes the system that someone then lands up there. And then he says, you know, if this one rock was here, there would have been a major accident. But someone just pushed it on the side. There were a couple of times when we were driving, and he just missed that. Had that car hit that stone, then there would have been a crash, then maybe robbers and rogues would have come. Whatever would have happened late at night, we're going to help you. But because someone had taken the trouble just to push it out a little more. So at that time, even if my tongue doesn't make dua, there's a heart which got no tongue that just says, oh, he lucky. That one, oh, lucky, is a dua itself. And it will go up in the heavens looking for the man who removed that thing. Who knows who he is. And later on, who knows what and what that one, oh, lucky, will bring him. He'll change his whole life. Because when one, one lanat could destroy the whole thing, then one benefit could make the whole thing. But how hard was it for me to remove it? Very easy. But what he did, it opened up my whole life. So I couldn't reach that top branch, which was what I wanted to reach, my maqsad. I wanted to be the greatest alim, the greatest faqih, the greatest teacher, the greatest mujaddid. I wanted to change the world. I wanted to stay halal at all times. I never wanted to fall in haram. It's a high branch for me. And everyone wants to reach it. But the hadith then said that when you're looking at that high branch, then always remember there's also a low branch. The low branch, if you can't reach the high branch, put your hand on the low branch and pull one. The second is the high branch, even if you're reaching, use the low branch to support your legs. So that you don't fall. You don't have to hold yourself so high. So what an example it was. That these easy things, that's why la tahqiranna minal ma'roofi shay'a. That good actions don't think any one of them is small. Because sometimes that small thing is keeping you up there. And that small one goes, like one person, one alim, his mother passed away. So after his mother passed away, many things in his life started going wrong. So then he said that it is only now that I understood where the duas were coming from. And as long as now, who looks at the mother, like I'm the alim, I'm making my tahqiq, I'm studying, I'm giving bayanat, everything is going right, my madrasa is flourishing. And I really think my duas are doing it because everyone's coming to ask me for dua. I am reading tahajjud. Suddenly the mother passed away. The same tajur is there, the same teaching is there, the same bayans are there, nothing is happening but now. Only problems after problems, sickness after sickness. 
Then he said, now I understood that that one old woman who no one thought anything of. But because every day someone was taking her food to her, so she was going to make a dua. Whether she said by the tongue the dua or by the heart, but that dua was changing his whole life. So what it was, he had a lower branch. So we in our life, whenever you get the chance to find the lower branch, we all want to go high. And everyone says it's very hard to stay pure. So always look for lower branches. Hazrat Mu'ana Abrarul Haqsab Rahimullah would say, it is the small, small sunnas that pull towards the big ones. It is the small, small ones that pull towards the big ones. And then he would give the example, he said, like many a time when the aeroplane wants to take off, and before that huge aeroplane goes in the sky, you will see that small truck is used to pull the aeroplane from what they call the hangar to the runaway. Had the aeroplane been told to fly just like that, and that small truck was not there to pull it, then it would never have taken off because it needed a runaway first. So first it had someone to pull it out of that hangar because it couldn't maneuver itself properly now when it came out and that small truck brought it on the runaway, what was it? A very small truck. But that small truck was the cause of the huge aeroplane going high in the sky. So sometimes those small actions we regard it as it hasn't do anything. But that's what puts the aeroplane high. And the day when those small ones go away, then we'll all think that I'm here because I'm here. But sometimes and many a time it's because somebody else is keeping me here. Meaning some dua, some help. So now when you go out, you will understand, if I smile at my Muslim brother, وَلَوْ أَن تَلْقَى أَخَاكَ بِوَجْهٍ طَلِقٍ What we would have understood in the hadith is, that don't think any action to be insignificant, you'll get sawab for it, even if you smile at your Muslim brother. But the word sawab for me and you is like a jannati thing, that's there. As long as there's no now benefit, it's not so important. But now you look at it, that in your own life, don't ever think these small things are not making big things happen. Even if it just means smiling at one Muslim brother. Because perhaps that day he was upset. You were the first one who smiled at him. You made him happy. Whether he with his tongue or without his tongue, but his heart with no tongue made a dua. That dua sometimes you might regard him as a no one of no one. Perhaps he was a Muslim. Perhaps he was a non-Muslim. Because when the bad dua of a non-Muslim can affect, then that prayer of the non-Muslim can also affect. So he just got happy with you. And suddenly things in your life started going right. So forget the sawab in the year after that's a different thing. But in this world what you are looking for, that I just want that door to open up. That divine help to come. I just want to come right. This one evil habit must leave me. So sometimes you are just looking for one man's happiness. And that's a very low branch. And that low branch will then help you to go very high up the branches. But always look for low branches. There is it. That the tree of Islam, where it got high branches, it also got low branches. Allah grant us all understanding, tawfiq. Always look for it and Allah grant us that we are always able to grab onto some, some or the other, according to my istidad, according to your istidad, what ability. Some people Allah has given the ability that he got 50 rand. So he goes to the tuck shop to buy something and he could have bought this or that and then he sees somebody else coming into the same shop. So he says at that moment, what will it harm me today if I buy the cheaper one? I was going to use that same amount of money and that extra 5 rand I'll put it in that man's hand so he can buy something higher, just so that I can go a little bit lower. So you will drink the same drink perhaps. But that boy drank a different drink. Perhaps in his life he never had that hope. I will also buy that. It doesn't always happen as an example. But when he drinks that day, how happy he will be. Because he never had the chance. So Allah Taala has given us lot. And normally we will give sadaqah because we say sawab. But when you understand, perhaps that smile that I bring on he and his family will make my whole day, or will make my whole life. But suddenly when you give the sadaqah and he says, Jazakallah, you will also say, Jazakallah. I made your day, you made my life. I made your day, you made my life. That You were that low branch, I grabbed onto you and I went up. Everything started happening. So it is easy to reach the top branches when man looks for the lower branches. Allah grant us